These scars long have yearned for your tender caress to bind our fortunes. Damn what the stars and rend my heart open. Then your love profess a winding, weaving fate to which we both atone. You flee my dream come the morning. Your scent, berry star, lilac sweet. To drink raven locks and twisted stormy. Of violet eyes glistening as you weep. The wolf I will follow into storm to find your heart its passion displaced by our ever growing hardening into stone amidst the cold to hold you in a heated embrace you flee my dream come the morning your scent berries tart lilac sweet to drink of raven locks and twisted stormy of violet eyes glistening as you weep i know not if fate would have us live as one or if by love's blind chance we've been bound the wish i whispered when it all began did it forge a love you might never have found you flee my dream come the morning your scent very star lilac sweet Raven locks and twisted stormy of violet eyes glistening as you weep.
Really? Hi, everybody. Welcome to Roll with Advantage. Oh, my God, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to investigate. Um, oh, wait. Oh, this is not good. I realize that it's not right. Oh, oh my God. We are completely. <laughs> oh. Where are Hold we? on. Let me see it. I want to see it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do we want to try migrating back? Will that fix things? No. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh. There you go. Well, oh no, there's two of me. Ah! <laughs> Christ on a cracker. I'm so glad we never have technical issues. <laughs> oh, look, there's, mm -hmm. there's two the chip. It's funny. Okay. That's hilarious. Okay, give Felicity a bigger head. Just give Felicity a head. Oh, there she is. Okay, there you go. Much better yeah. than two Joes. Mark's arm over here. <laughs> Ah, I'm so incredibly sorry. Hey, eight people that tuned in at the very beginning of the stream. <laughs> Hello. Where are the professionals? You know, most of the time I am. I like to think. But in moments like these, good improv skills rear their face and i am all right i don't need to vamp anymore it's all fixed <laughs> rear their face. Yeah. Oh. That was good. Yeah, oh you want to know why it did that is because we're not in the same order in this chat that we are in rwa that's why it does yeah. that oh. yeah. alphabetical oh my god okay all right, well, right. yeah she was, she was. that's all right. right okay i'm gonna roll the intro bye <laughs> School. No, I feel not. like I should be Welcome. somewhat able to. Welcome, everybody, to the first stream of the new year. It's great to have you here. Great to be here. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and dive into the 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 first episode of the the Adventures of the Salamander Coast in the Year of Our Lord, Paylor 2023. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right in. As is tradition here on Roll with Advantage, I. Do not do the summary. Instead, I have the players do the summary. This week on summary is... It is I. Gemma! So, yeah. Gemma, um, whenever you are ready, feel free to take it away. Hell yeah, man. Uh, so, before we get uh, the whole song of uh, Eidolon's Crucible, uh, the party spends some time at the Spirits and Old Souls Tavern. Uh, where the owner, Tusi, greets us and offers us, us some traditional soul fire shots, which is a specialty drink that channels the brewmasters of the past. As we wait for the shots, Cecily goes to Uma, this old gleeman that has his coat strung up all through the tavern, um, and is just curious about his whole thing, asking if it's true that he is sustained on music alone. He confirms and the two end up discussing what it's like to live for so long. Cecily, interested as being of Odin blo old blood even, uh, provides her with longevity. The party's shots arrive and it tastes like absolute shit and everyone just lies and dodges when asked if we enjoyed it or not. Uh, but Tusi is able to see th right through it and shuns the party, saying that honesty is always better. And in the spirit of it, also admits that they weren't the real shots uh, and follows up with bringing the actual shots to us. Uh, so the true Soulfire shots have a much different experience, giving brief flashes of life experiences of previous dwarves. Uh, as the Crucible is able to hold the souls of those that passed, it allows for that connection to be maintained with those of the living. Carousel also goes to talk to the Gleeman Uma, and he asks uh, what about the cloak and what the performance means to her. 
Uh, and the answers that she gives in return plays them enough that he gives her one of only two that he and her now share. Uh, Kal- what is it? Kal- Kalogarian patches, yes. I know words. Um, and so the thing is imbued with magic that allows spirits to be reached when she performs. The Crucible's song finally rings out, its light and song echoing through pretty much the whole city and changing the whole vibe up. And the party is greeted by the Forge Master, and Ajax is given a simple hammer which he'll be able to craft the new weapons from. As he begins the process, he's able to sync with the spirits uh, and of Forge Master's past as they're able to guide him through and basically uh, be the magic hammer instead of the hammer itself. Uh, during the process, he also gets a little visit by Leos, who's the Lion of Paylor, uh, who gives Ajax his blessing. And because this thing is more than a simple forge, the fragments of Ajax's sword and Carousel's cursed dagger transform into several different things. Uh, a divine spear and shield for Ajax, and two daggers for Carousel, both of them making a promise to the Forge Master to ensure that the weapons will not be used for ill as they have been before and will be put to rest once they can be. Party then head back to the keep where we were given rooms and Carousel does a little check-in on Boulder. He mentions his plans to meet with King Borelli and hopefully repair the Aesir uh, dwarf relations. They also talk about repairs for their own relationship between the party and the Odinsons. Boulder saying that he's been happy with what he's seen from the party, but ultimately it is Odin's favour that is most important. Carousel also gives an apology for the deaths of Magni and Modi, but Boulder was always opposed to them and their father, and so wasn't really too sad about it in the first place. Uh, but he also says that he plans to return to Fjordalef once we leave the city, uh, and could potentially come to aid us once again in Maester, but that depends on how the next days go. Uh, and throughout this conversation with Carousel, he seemed to grow more tense or uncomfortable, uh, and so the conversation basically ends there as he heads off to his room. And yes, that is end of session. Wah! Wonderful. Summary. Thank you so much, Gemma. So with that, we'll go ahead and dive in to our session. Picking up where we left off, all of you had headed to rest for the evening, as it was particularly late after the forging of these new weapons and the first foray into the city of Kaladarian. As all of you are preparing for sleep, um, preparing to settle down for the night and get the rest that you desperately need after the horrible nature of your travel to this city. One of you in particular, Cecily, actually, there is a brief knock on your door right as you're getting ready for bed. Okay. Well, let's, let's fucking roleplay then. Um, so, <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> ah! um, but yeah, let's um, imagine her kind of like the braid is half undone and then she hears the knock and she's like, just a minute. And she like braids it all back up um, and she'll go ahead and just kind of somewhat fatigued open the door. Okay. As you open the door, you see none other than probably the person you were least hoping to see this late at night. You see Balder. He stands in front of the doorway, and as you sort of stare at him, he looks down towards you and says, I know I'm probably the person you least wish to speak with now. And I understand that. But... If you're willing to listen, there are things I'd, I'd want to share with you. And in return, if there's anything you wish to say to me, regardless of what it may be, I will listen to what you have to say. Mm. 
and she'll expression immediately drops upon seeing him goes kind of stone cold she will glance down both ends of the hallway see if anyone else is there um, and assuming no one is she'll actually close the door to her bedroom and step out to him and bring mm. the conversation out to the hallway okay. not welcoming welcoming him in to her space at all that's fair um, and she'll just yeah she'll, she'll shut the door and she'll probably look the two plus feet or whatever up to him <laughs> uh, I assume he's I know he's probably not as tall as Odin but I've been assuming he's pretty big um, yeah he's he's probably six foot ten six foot eleven he's very lanky tall yeah. and and thin um he uh nods at that and he sort of gestures over to the table and chair sort of the central living area close to all the bedrooms and he gestures over towards it and says would you like to take a, to take a seat over there with me if it'd be more comfortable for you or we can stand just talk and she'll stand completely still very well <sighs> I understand that with everything that has happened, you do not care much for my family or for most things related to your lineage. And I'm not here to change your mind about my father or about any of the Aesir of Vania. Instead, I wish to mend the wound between us. While at the end of the day, I seek peace between all the realms. I understand that that might not be something Odin is willing to see. So I wish to offer you information should things ever deteriorate to a drastic level. Go on. Part of what makes Odin so powerful, of course he is a very powerful warrior and mage, but his true gift is his spear. Should you remove the spear from him, he becomes a much more manageable entity to deal with. The spear gives him a great blessing of knowledge. A very great blessing of knowledge. All spells known to humanoids, celestials, fiends, constructs, even those entities that exist outside of our realm of understanding. Odin has all of that magic at his disposal. Not only that, but the spear amplifies said magic. So, should you remove the spear from him, he is a, as I said before, much more manageable target. Of course, I don't wish for that to happen. But if it came down to it, between the safety of the realm and the life of my father... I know which one I would pick. I just don't know if I would have the strength to do it. But I know you would. Why don't you? If he's been treating you how you say he has for... 
fuck, what is it? 300 years? 500, maybe? However old you are. Why do you keep putting up with it? You can see there is a long stare that he takes in that moment, just away from you. You can see he genuinely is like thinking about the question you ask him. I wish I had a good answer for you. He's my father. He's my blood. And regardless of how horrible of a man he might be, he raised me. I've known him all my life and I don't know if that's something I could do. I think a part of me would want to try and save him to try and make him see the error of his ways. But I think you and me both know that that might not ever happen. But I don't know if I could, if I could do that. But I know you could. She'll take a step away from him, create some distance, mm -hmm. and without making eye contact with him. What do you actually want? A contingency plan. Should my plan not succeed? I want to make sure that there's a plan B in place for a worst case scenario. But your question maybe was asking, what do I want from this situation? Is that more on the nose? What do you want from me other than that? Why do you care if our relationship is mended. You know what I'm going to do to everyone in your family. At the end of the day, I just want to live a peaceful life. I've been in the chaos for so long. I've been dealing with mischief for so long. And I think that maybe, just maybe, if this final thing happens, I can walk away from it. But I can't walk away from it if some angry daughter of Tear is going to keep chasing after me, promising my death. So I'd like to live, because I know you wouldn't give up until I was dead. And I'm tired. She'll uh, make eye contact with him again. Just kind of slowly turn around. Do you know anyone who you aren't related to? Anyone you really care about? Hmm. And once again, there's another long stare and silence. So 
So much of my life has been self-preservation. I guess that's another thing that I'd want. Because honestly, I can't think of any. Blood is bullshit, Alder. Whatever blood gave you or him or even me, it's not what matters. I'm going to be honest, you acting like you're gonna keep bending over backward for blood your entire life. I, I just don't fucking get it. But fine. And she'll... She softens a little. Um, it looks like there's more vitriol kind of bubbling under the surface, but she just sort of takes a deep breath and it, none of it comes out. Tell me one thing. Were you in the room that night? When my mom disappeared, when I disappeared, when Tear was... And she pauses, she doesn't even want to put it into words. Did you hold a weapon in your hand and go and do it for him? No. Because that's... That was Thor. What I can tell you is I was sent to find you and your mother. But I never found you. They sent me to track. The trail was cold. What was he like before? Warm. He was strict as a general, as a commander. There was no slack when you fought with him. But when the fighting was done, the training was over. Being around him was like being near a campfire. He was a far cry from my father. And what about the prophecy? What do you mm. think about it? Well, as long as I'm alive, I don't think there's anything to worry about. That prophecy, the one he found, you mean the tablet? Yeah, what other one? <laughs> You'd be surprised how many prophecies Odin has 
delved into. That's one of the only physical ones that he was able to find. Prophecy that he believed was about you, and who knows, he may be right. But I think, in my humble opinion, I think that you're the key to preventing a prophecy. But not in the way that he thinks. He's afraid that these prophecies will lead to the destruction of not just the material plane, but specifically to Fjordaleth, to the fractured peninsula. And he wants to find a way to save his home. Our home. He thinks you will destroy it. I think you will too. But I think at the cost of something greater. If Yarleth is destroyed, but the rest of the Salamander Coast gets to stand tall and free. I think that's a pretty fine deal. But your part of the prophecy can only come true if one of the subsequent parts also comes true. And that's Balder dying. As it says in it. And as I'm sure you know, I am invulnerable to all things magical and physical. No harm can come to me. So, I very much doubt that Fjordaleth will be destroyed anytime soon. Listen. I'm sure there's some long-term plan I'm gonna find out about later. I'm sure there's something I'm gonna learn about you that I don't like, but right now... Right now... Just look me in the eye and tell me... That you want this to end the same way that I do. And then maybe we can get along. At least as long as we need to, and then we can never see each other again. And tell me, how exactly do you want this to end? Tears soul back in his body, no matter what the cost. Whoever tries to stop it, I'll rip him out of the weave if I have to. All right. Easy enough. I can agree to that. And uh, this is the only moment I'm going to ask to roll an insight check. Okay. On that statement in particular? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Because otherwise, I, you know, I, I figured I'd boil it down to a question because otherwise I'd be rolling it like the whole <laughs> fucking time. Uh, and I'm going to use a luck point. Hey. Hey. Hey, it was the same fucking number. <laughs> All right, um, no. So she only got an eight. She can't read this guy. <laughs> what a shame. Um, yeah, as far as you can tell, he seems to be honest and truthful in his intent. Hmm. 
All right. She'll um. She'll kind of look to the floor. And just kind of mull it all over. Is that it? There's one more thing. I was hoping that you would hear me out at least before I told you this in particular. There's one final thing that may assist you. It's not information I have, but that a freak does. Er, um, um, Freya does. Odin, at a time in his life, attempted to speak with the fates. He hung himself at a tree near a lake within Jormungandry somewhere. I've searched for this place, but I have not found it in all my years of searching. Freya knows where it is. If you find her and ask her, she may give it to you. And perhaps if it does come to fighting with Odin, you might have a way to stun him, to use the noose that he hung himself with to your advantage. Should it come to fighting, which, of course, I hope it does not. Do you know any more than that? Because I don't exactly think I'm portly enough to tie a rope around that guy. <laughs> I'm sure that should it come to it. There might be more magic at play than using the physical rope. But I don't know, like I said, I'm sure if you have any indication of the relationship with my mother, you would understand as to why I do not go and communicate with her on this. Yeah. I've kept you up long enough. Cecily, I will let you return to sleep. Thank you for speaking with me. And I hope that on our continued journey, things are more peaceful. So nod. Um she won't say any sort of goodbye or closing remark at all. She'll just kind of slowly get back into her room. Kidoki. And kind of as soon as she does, she'll sort of like clench and loosen every muscle in her body a few times. Just working through all of this pent up anger at not just Balder, but his whole family and her entire life that she was just mm -hmm. trying not to scream about that whole conversation. <laughs> to just have someone to throw every burden at. Um, mm -hmm. And she'll eventually manage to relax herself after maybe a half hour and eventually get kind of get back into her bedtime routine okay alrighty sounds good so with that eventually all of you do um, head to sleep and you find your rest uh, it is peaceful there is no interrupting or intruding thoughts as you do so and eventually all of you wake up and as you do, uh, it, does anybody have any specific morning rituals that they like to do as everybody's getting ready? Or are you just getting up, getting ready, and heading to your first thing for the day, which might be 
Kyo I don't know. It's up to you guys. But does anybody have anything they'd like to do either by themselves or with one other person briefly before we dive into the uh, group activities for the day? I don't know how necessarily brief it's going to be, but Carousel does want to talk to Bianca regarding the whole bringing someone back thing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Carousel, as you head out of uh, your room and head to Bianca's, uh, Bianca, what's your morning ritual looking like? Uh, she's not a morning person, so I think, <laughs> as it's been well established, she's just like waking up, taking time to adjust to whatever daylight may be peeking into her room. Um, and she's a simple gal, you know? I think that's also been well established. She just does the basic, like, getting ready steps. She's, there's nothing fancy to it. Alrighty. Eventually you do hear a, uh, a slight little knock at your door. Probably a rhythmic knock, indicating <laughs> who might be at the door. <laughs> She'll open the door. Good morning. Good morning. Did you sleep all right? Not bad. You? Better than I feel like nights previous. Better beds. Um, I think I might have to make the morning a bit more unpleasant, though, if you wouldn't mind me doing so. Come on in, and she will gesture for her to come in and shut the door. Um. Yeah, Carousel will just... Yeah, she'll go over to where, like, the bed in the room is and just kind of gesture for Bianca to sit near her. And she will. You mentioned when we are talking to King, talking about the forge, about what they could offer us. You mentioned turning your soul into armor. Yes. And, well course there are limited I feel options on what that could mean and you are correct I think we are all aware of well it seems the two options we have the two paths we can go down with bringing someone back That it will be life for one and not so for the other. But with that armor, it seems you've found yourself a different option with Natalia. Like I said before, you all have my blessing to bring back whoever you all feel should be brought back. And also, like I said, I'm not ignorant. I know who that choice would be. I still want to honor my mother. And I can't pretend that this is the option I prefer. But it's not... I wouldn't, with whatever choice, if I were to make the choice, I wouldn't have some ounce of guilt. Not even an ounce. Immense amount of guilt for whatever cho choice. Because one is the selfish one, and the other one is also, in a very different way, a selfish one. Neither of them are selfish. You know that. Even if you're not believing yourself at this moment, you know it's not selfish. No matter what happens, it's not choosing what you're going to have for a meal. It's choosing between lives. It's not a choice anyone wants to do. But... If we're able to get someone back, that is a blessing. A blessing that few people are able to have. And so it's a choice that we're going to make regardless. Right? 
yes, I think... <laughs> I think we should make a choice. In a way, it is a blessing. Um, as a Valkyrie, you know I do have a little bit of a different opinion on death and tinkering with the balance of life and death. It's been a very difficult moral conversation in my heart and in my head. I still feel guilty in a moral way of even bringing back Cecily and then telling your sister to find a way to make peace with not being able to bring back your men. I feel guilty preaching to people that we should respect and honor death and let it happen while continuing to do the opposite. I think that's true. I think, I think this isn't going against any of your tenants in the slightest. Yes, there's obviously the sanctity of death. It is a it is something that needs to be held in such reverence, but it's usual for people to live on past death in some way, in their influence, in their power. The spells that are able to bring someone back, they're nothing but divine. It's not a thing of corruption, it's not a thing of going against the Raven Queen or any of that. And I think if we are able to bring someone back, and if the other is able to live on through, through some kind of armour, I think that's more than an honourable choice. And I'm sure it is something that your mother would more than want to do. To be able to protect you. Even beyond graves. But I also need to know that that's something that you are wanting to do. I will never want my mother to be armor over holding her again that's i cannot if you're asking me to honestly tell you that that's something i would feel peace about over the choice of bringing her back i that would be lying i know but forgive me your your mother had her adventure in life, yes? Along with your father. She had started to settle. She was able to leave a mark on this world. And she'll give like an earnest nod to you as a person. As far as I understand, with Kyofi, yes, she's had a long life, a good life. But she, she's only just turned a new page in it. That's not fair to say, I know, but it's just that with the Goliaths, with the change they've made in recent, with... She will kind of just stop, as if her thought just kind of trails off and she's lost it. I know what you're saying, Carisola. I don't think either choice is wrong. And I know maybe what you and the others see with my mother 
I understand it seems like she died to protect me and then she can continue to protect me. And yes, that's not, not true, but there's a lot more layers to how Isin affected me being raised how my parents chose to raise me and me going against their wishes in order to seek out Isin. They came to their around for sure, but most of my life has been them hoping I would not ever touch that flame. And when I did, because I just could not stay away, and maybe they knew deep down that I always would, like they said, I don't know, but that's the selfishness I'm speaking of. And that is my immense guilt in the fact that my mother died when most of my life I knew I should have never, at least in her eyes, his eyes, their eyes, never sought it out. What do you think would have happened if you didn't, though? It doesn't matter. Isin's tower would have been there regardless. You're His right. Work with the Dark One would have been there regardless. I know what you're trying to say, I do. But I'm telling you, I don't believe you. And what happened wasn't your fault. You seeking it out wasn't your fault. It was a part of you. A part of you that was always going to be there, no matter what they wanted, no matter what you wanted. And one day, I'm sure I will see it your way. Now is just too soon. And that's okay. I just... I can't be a part of this. And I really hope you all will just give me this. Please let yourselves bring back whomever. And yes, I know it'll be Kyothi, but I can't Right now, I just cannot say it or admit it, and I don't want to be there when it happens. I want her back. I want my mom back. I don't think either choice is wrong. I don't. And I have no hard feelings to whatever you guys do. But I need time, and right now we don't have it, and that's okay. I'm sorry if you are wise, that's <laughs> sure at least, but I just, I think it's right for everyone to have a say for it. If you do not wish to, then I, I suppose I can't blame you. I think it's a terrible situation regardless, regardless of connections, but feel between friendship and familial, it's... I understand that it comes too much of a gripping hold. I really appreciate your words, though. I really do. I just... There's so much already about my life that is changing, has been changing, and I haven't grasped the majority of it. And this is not one that I'm ready to, ready to face, really. That. Well, I suppose in that instance, then I can, talk to you as if you do not wish to be there for the conversation. 
you. And I just, I need you to know that it's not with any kind of malice, any kind of preference for anything. This is where we are. I know. I really do. And really, I thank you for... Honestly, I can tell you just want me to be okay. And I know that. And I will be. I really will. Just not right now. That's all right. She'll bring you in for a hug. Yeah. This is why I don't turn my camera on. God. I'm just watching you feeling bad. <laughs> but yeah, and it'll, it won't be like a quick hug. It'll be like a good friend. Yeah, like, she'll I stay need there hug. for as long yeah. as Bianca wants her. Um, yeah. But yeah. She'll eventually reconvene with everyone, unless people have things they wish to do. I will say, as uh, Caracilla, you leave the room and Bianca, you're just kind of um, in, in your room, Mimir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> respectful the entire time, didn't, you know? <laughs> he was part of the hug. Fuck it. He yeah. was. Bring him in. When Caracilla leaves, um, he, he does say to you, uh, Bianca, it's a hard choice to make last, but uh, you're making the right one. And I know I can't ever be a shoulder to cry on, but I at least have ears to listen whenever you want to talk. I really appreciate that. I and also, I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think I'll, like I said, with time I'll be able to. I don't, I don't know if I have words right now. That's fair. It's very fair. And I will also say, if you ever get tired of me just hanging around, they can pass me off to somebody else and I can bother them from time to time, just out of the blue, if you ever get tired of it. Do you have a preference? My best way might just be to roll a dice if you're going to pass me on, honestly. I <laughs> I don't mind you being here, so right. on your top choice, you can hang out. I feel like it's unfair to rank, but I'm okay with it staying the same, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Ajax is always a little too bloody. And, um, oh my gosh, the, and the hair. The hair, oh, it's already bad with the beard, love. It's real bad. <laughs> um... <laughs> And Sunni, he just, he dances when he fights, and I think I'd get sick, honestly. I can only imagine, yeah. Carousel's got the Garrity, I wouldn't want to get in the way of that. Mm -hmm. um, Cecily. And Cecily's moldy bread. She's been more clean recently. Um, That's true. But still, the bread, right at, at moldy yeah. bread level, I don't know how I'd feel <laughs> about that. So, you know what? Honestly, if I'm not bothering you, I'd like to stay. <laughs> you can keep hanging out. Not a problem. Very good. Also, between you and me, this, this stays. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. No <laughs> okay. So, um, with, with that, you, uh, you finish getting ready, but, um, you will probably <laughs> make Jack's blood ass. Yeah. Oh. He was talking about how bloody Ajax gets, but like he would be on the hip, so I don't know. <laughs> blood spurts, man. Yep. Apparently. <laughs> oh All right. So, um, I but... have a new name now. <laughs> oh man. The use of spurt as a verb there was excellent. <laughs> Blood spurts, man. <laughs> oh, gross. Okay. Uh, well, um, Cecily uh, wants to... I'm going to stop doing that Are with my flying? hands. Are <laughs> Cecily cast fly! No, um, but <laughs> she doesn't like this. <laughs> but, uh, 
That'd be so funny. 60 foot fly speed, just. <laughs> um, but like a bumblebee. <laughs> but um, woo, uh, she wants to target Uni. Um, who? At some point. <laughs> Sooney, Colin uh, Papa. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Scooney. It's <laughs> um, I'm not doing a voice, by the way. You didn't hear a voice. Um, so, but yeah. Unless, uh, I, know, I just did a thing, so if anybody else wants to go first, that's cool. If anybody, Ajax, uh, got a thing, there's a way. I was just going to say Ajax in the morning is going to do what he usually does. He's going to work out, train mm. with his new weapon, Mm -hmm. uh, but then he's going to mm. pray to Leos. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all he's going to do. Okay. All right. Good to know. A man of faith now. I mean, Leos did talk to him. Yeah. Straight up was like, hey, I'm real. And he was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Gotta change your name from. Paul to Saul. <laughs> the other way. Man, it's the other fuck, it's the other way. Sorry. No. No, that's how it went. Yep. Sorry, Age. Christian viewers. Ajax to just Jack. No. <laughs> His last name is Jack. Jack? <laughs> Ajax Jack. Ajax Jack. Um anyway. Yeah, that's it for me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cecily, Cecily's gonna fly over to Suni. Um, walk. She's gonna walk over to Suni. Um, if he's uh, out and about, what's he doing this morning? Where is he? Well, I, I was actually gonna say that I think Suni would have tried to get an early start on the morning, um, and maybe have gone outside um, to a secluded area to like meditate for a little bit. So if, if I could maybe do one thing before Cecily pops up, that would be great. Absolutely and then I can. Okay. Not. No, you can't. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, fuck then, I guess. Okay. So, Suni, <laughs> even though this is a. Uh, uh, so, uh, well, Cecily, as you start to look for Suni, you knock on his door, he doesn't answer. You kind of look around the area and you can't find him. And we're going to cut to black right there uh, as we uh, cut instead to Suni. It's, as it cuts to black, there's three hours earlier <laughs> yeah. Suni is coming out of his door um, and Suni easy enough even though this is in um, inside a mountain um, right maybe that's even, exactly where yeah. I want to be yeah you're is, in is I want to yep sorry go ahead yeah <laughs> no, you're good <laughs> inside a mountain there are tons of groves within the mountainous um, keep that you currently are resting on. Um, and easy enough, you can navigate to one of those, maybe asking Vondor to point you in the right direction, and he does so. Mm -hmm. um, and you enter a grove that is covered in plenty of vegetation, but there's very little dirt in this area. The small patches of dirt shoot out vegetation, um, kind of like a... Um, uh, like how, how uh, some plants can just grow anywhere and they can just spread like, oh, like vines crawling up the side of a house. That's exactly what this looks like, except it's all over this grove, but it is entirely awesome. um, stone. And you can see these sharp um, craggy rocks shooting out of the out of the ground. It's a stone garden. It's very beautiful. Uh, so as you enter in, what would you like to do? Um, so he's going to walk to the center of the grove area and kind of sit down, uh, crisscross applesauce. Um, and he's going to uh, close his eyes in a meditative kind of stance. And I just kind of imagine um, the moon blades kind of like swirling around him as he meditates um, with like that kind of magnety effect that they have. Um, but what I am trying to accomplish is that a long time ago, um, when we were, oh, I shit, I don't even remember where we were, but um, it was when I first met Sultana with Bianca, and I had that kind of, like, weird emotional epiphany thing where all of, like, the strings of light were going. Yeah. Um, knowing the day that we're about to have, Suni wants to kind of try to reach out to that feeling, and what I want to try to accomplish is, is trying to see if I can't connect being in the mountain with, like, avatar style in like the giant tree in the swamp um like feeling out if i can make a connection with kiyothi and elowen and i i want to gain a sense as to whether or not her soul seems to be at peace 
or if there was something else going on, or if there's any sort of sense I can get on that, like, heartstring light thing. If that mm. makes sense. Okay. And you said for Keothi specifically. Yeah, like, I don't know if I needed, if this is, like, a religion check, but I, I'm just trying to get, like, I don't even need to speak to anyone, I'm just trying to get vibes on her soul, I suppose. Um, yeah. And, like, her state. Yeah, go ahead and make a religion check for me, and then that'll kind of determine what direction this goes. Yes. Yes. Oh, that wasn't amazing, but... Um, that's a 12. 12? Okay. Suni, as you sit down, crisscross applesauce, as you said... Um, in the middle of this stone garden, you can feel that connection that you have to the Mother of Mountains and to that extent to the Goliath people. You can feel that taking on the namesake of Kalukatho was more than just a kind gesture from Kyothi. You can tell that it was her tying herself to you in more ways than one. As you feel that connection, you reach out. You follow that thread of light like a, a spider web. You can feel a ping where something near you is active. And as you follow that trace, you can feel that soul and you can feel that connection is very strong it's not entirely clean it's not entirely without issue but there is a connection and it is strong and almost like you're looking into a glass box you can see in this sort of ethereal mountain Sitting in a room by herself is Kyothi. She is scarred and bruised. She's hurt. You can see there are deep, deep, deep purple and blue bags under her eyes. You can see her face is gaunt and patches of hair begin to fall from her head. You can see her decaying. You can see her in pain. You see her there and while you can't communicate, you can't talk, you can feel very clearly that she is not at peace. She is being tortured by her own life after death. As you look around, you can see other Goliaths. They just float freely. But you can see Kyothi is trapped, unable to leave this small box she's confined to. And that's something that resonates with you, Suni. You remember that Goliaths are born of the mountain. They're given life by Elowen. And due to the way that she died, her body was never returned. It simply faded away. And so now her soul is trapped with no way to free it. As you make that connection, you make that realization, you can feel that light pull you back. As you're being pulled back, is there anything you want to try and do before you're pulled back to the oh stone Lord. garden? Um, so you said that she was kind of like on an, an ethereal mountain in the glass box, right? Like yeah. that I'm 
my mind is seeing. Does this ethereal mountain look like a real live mountain that I know at all? Mm. I'm just curious. Um, no. Okay. No, I would, I would say not. Um... Oh, Lord, I don't even know what he would do. I guess, is there any way... What he would want to try to do is to, through this li this light spider web line, to try to feed some energy to try to at least ease whatever pain she's in, because that it hurts him more than anything. So, like, I don't know if he can try to, like, transfer, like, lay on hands through the weave. I don't know how that works, but I know it probably doesn't work, but... Um, Suni, as you reach out and in this final moment, you grab onto that that box that she seems confined to and you pour in just like all of your lay on hands in an effort to give some type of positive energy to her. You can see her head tick to where you're at and her head cocks to the side. Suni? And in that moment, you are immediately pulled back to where you were. You don't know if it helped, but she knew you were there. As you open your eyes, the stone surrounds you and the grass grows near you. But still, there is no Kiyothi. I imagine he kind of comes back to with like a gasp and the moon blades kind of clatter to the ground as they were like floating initially. Um, and he's going to take some time to just sit there. Um, and then probably, I, I think he, he was out pretty early. So probably after, mm -hmm. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of being alone, he would get up and try to, he would walk back. Okay. So as you are taking that solemn walk back, um, eventually as you re-enter the area where you'd been staying in, you can see Cecily knocking at your door, sort of looking around. And then Cecily, as you look down the hallway, you can see Suni uh, returning from the outside. Hmm. I guess he's cheese and she'll kind of like <laughs> see him. Oh. Uh, well, hi. Hey. Um, I'll get right to it, um, and she'll kind of cock her head towards his room in case he wants to talk, uh, more privately. You know, he, 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 he's cooler than Boulder. We can go talk in the room. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll give a slight nod and push the door open. Yeah, once they're in, she'll kind of take a heavy breath. So, there are two very personal attachments in this group to the choice we have to make today, so I know Bianca doesn't want to make a choice, and even though if it was my own mom, I'd do it in a heartbeat and wouldn't consult any of you. I know people are different, so I'm gonna try to respect that. But you're the other one. We all love Keo, but... You know. Figured I should ask where you're at. So kind of, uh move to his bed and kind of sit down, um, looking at the ground before he starts to speak and then he'll say, um, you know, I was feeling really conflicted about this whole thing and I still am, but I just saw the most terrible thing. I was meditating and trying to see if I could reach Kyo, 
somehow. And I, I saw her. And she <laughs> was in pain. And she was suffering. So now I just don't know. Do... Do you want to withhold your vote too? Or... Do you think you have it in you to make a choice? I... I mean, I, I know what I would pick. So I, I don't know if there's... I, I'm... I don't know how I could look Bianca in the eye after doing that, though. I don't know either. I'm trying really hard not to get into the way of how people deal with death. One of the only useful things I really learned in the orphanage, you know, everybody's dealing with it, and everybody's dealing with it differently. Usually doesn't make sense to me. The weave is cruel for making us go through this. No one should have to choose. I think if it were up to the weave, the dark one wouldn't be plucking at it in the first place. Fair enough. This is gonna sound really, uh... Religion-y coming from me. But... I think you'll be one of the people that'll get it. And bring it on. When I was in my first life, there was a feeling I had that I never noticed was there until it was gone. It was a feeling that everything that was happening to me was meant to be. And with my life, that was a curse. I was on a track. I couldn't do anything about it. I was meant to lose people and to suffer. And whatever my plan in the grand scheme of this world was, I didn't have much say in it. And I got plucked out. And then I got brought back. And I don't know how to explain how it feels now other than... I don't think I got woven back in yet. I think whatever I do with my second wife... My second life is... What's gonna weave me in. It almost doesn't matter how much longer I'm here, it's... It's an eternity, because it's my choice now. That's how it feels, I don't know if that's how it is. 
you know, I mean, everyone makes choices whether they died and came back or not, but I can say this, and I don't know that I'll say this to Bianca, because I don't know if I would be able to word it the right way, but I don't really know that anyone's meant to die. They do, but I don't know that they're meant to. I think it's bullshit every time. Even the worst people in the whole world. People die and it sucks and it's bullshit and sometimes there's not really anything to learn from it other than this is something you can survive. But I do know for a fact the way I died, it wasn't natural. I don't think bringing me back is what messed up any sort of balance. And I'd feel the same way about either of them. Maybe, maybe people are meant to die, but not to that bastard that keeps killing our people. I think all of them should come back if we could do it. It's the fact that we have to pick one that's the hard part. Yeah, it really fucking sucks. You know, I just said a lot of words, and that's all I really should have said. <laughs> it's gonna be a really hard day. No matter what. Yeah. How did it feel coming back? Or dying, I guess. I don't know. I don't know that there's many words for it. Because the people that die aren't around to make new ones. It's not really an emotion. It's just... Can you picture anything from before you were born? Honestly, my mind is really empty. So that's all I remember. The emptiness. Well, I guess it was a little like that. Just sort of sinking no bottom there was a part in the back of my head that knew I should be terrified but I wasn't I could sort of feel more when carrying me and when you all did that ritual I kind of heard voices, but not the way you hear them when you're alive. It was, I don't know, something else. I've apparently died a lot of times, but I don't know. thing I suppose living or dying yeah uh, then soon he's gonna put his hand I don't know if is is Cecily like sitting next to him on the bed or is she standing up I think she would have moved over eventually okay. yeah. 
um, he would put a hand on her shoulder, um, and then he would say, Cecily, I don't know if we say this enough, but I'm so glad that you are still here. And then he would give her a hug. And then just all the memories of having to do this whole thing over again for something uh, floods back to like how it was that first time with the ritual and all of that. Me too. And most of all, I'm glad to know that you're glad you're back. And then he'll let go of the hug. Well, I have to vote. What's most important to me is that the people that don't want to know they could. But I do also need to make a choice. I guess the question is who has the most left to do with their second life? Maybe a kind of just a slow, solemn nod. Well, it's gonna be a long fucking day. Hey, have you eaten breakfast yet? I've just been laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, spiraling until now, actually, so. You got any of that pocket bread left? Um, she'll fish around. There's like three pieces. Uh, this one's really old. I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. You don't want that. This one's all right. I mean, it don't bother me. He'll, he'll like kind of move his lip up and point to his pointy teeth. Yeah. Here, have this pellet. <laughs> it's like an end that is just like hard tech. So you will try to bite down into it. I don't know if it's successful or not, but. I mean, that's really up to Cecily, depending on how long that piece of bread's been in there. <laughs> Probably about five days. Ooh, it is. It isn't that bad. It's yeah, air I mean, fried. That's manageable. <laughs> no. It's not moldy yet. That's just. Yet. <laughs> that's just what joke, Mimir by the way, claims. I'll admit that. <laughs> Mimir claims it was Bianca, for one, who made the comment about moldy bread. But yes, uh, uh, Mimir did validate it. So you are right still. <laughs> <laughs> Bianca can get away with it. Mamir better fucking watch it. <laughs> watch it, pal. You're on thin ice, head. <laughs> That's the uh, real reason Mamir shouldn't be with Cecily. They they would not. <laughs> I don't know that she would handle it well. She wouldn't be so? a good companion. <laughs> oh yeah, I could see that being an issue. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, with that, then, Cecily and uh, Suni, I'm assuming then the two of you would go join Carousel and Ajax to discuss. Ye. Ye. And to have breakfast. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm full now. Don't need nothing after the pack of bread. <laughs> pack of bread. So, um, Carousella Ajax, as the two of you are just sort of eating the small little bits of uh, food that you have been this morning, or um, with the food that's provided, you know, eating your fill, whatever that is for you. Um, a lot of food for Ajax. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of food. <laughs> gotta, gotta get that calorie intake up. Yep. Um, you do see Cecily and Suni approach and sit down at the uh, table with you. The only people that are missing now is... Um, Balder, Bianca, and Mimir. 
But other than that, the four decision makers sit around the table. Good morning, you two. <sighs> that you know, rough. Always. Yeah. Also, um... Maybe I shouldn't even say it unless no one else has put this together, but... You know, last night when we were having the, the meat and cheese board, I kept saying it was pig or cow or whatever. Yes. I'm starting to realize that's probably not what that was. What do it's you think? Best is... not think about it. I but but I am. What's down here? What did I eat? I ate a uh, lot of it. Whatever it is, it's good though, right? So it was I think it's that bad. It was good in the moment. He kind of stabbed one of the pieces of meat on his fork and goes, I mean, this is pretty good. Oh. Fuck, that looks good. <sighs> yeah, okay, I'll eat fucking mountain roach or whatever this is. <laughs> She'll just scrape large amounts of it onto a plate. Where is Bianca? I, I was talking to her a bit before. Um, she's respectfully not going to be here for our decision-making process. Did she say she wasn't eating? Well, we'll make sure she eats, but we need to choose who we're bringing back. And right. I did want to talk to her, and she said something about getting a soul into armor when we were talking with the king. I thought perhaps talking with her outside of a group set and hopefully at least give whatever kind of confirmation there can be from that. But she's not ready. I wouldn't expect her to be. And so, choice falls on all of us. And I, I hate to say how decided I'm already, but I suppose if anyone else has strong statements, opinions, anything, all of them are welcome. Where does everyone lie in this decision? Well... I'll start by saying I think both deaths are unnatural. So that's not part of it for me. question is who has the most unfinished business who has the most of a, a mark that they still need to leave on the world now we go about knowing No. Obviously, I mean, people can go their whole life kind of uneventfully until the end. My, uh, my middle mom didn't really do too much before she adopted me, and then that was the last three years for her, so... I guess it's hard to say. But... If I have to... And I guess... I guess we all fucking do. I think... 
Teothi has the most unresolved business. And the practical side of me says, I think she's also the one that the Dark One would shit his pants the most if we brought back. Suni. Uh, before I answer this question, I have to ask Joe really quickly. Um, I'm trying to yeah. remember specifically uh, when we were like in the Underdark uh, Goliath ruins fighting Daku and all that nonsense. Yeah. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Were the Goliaths that like Poe got the weapon from, was that a Kalukatho? Yes, those were the ruins of the Kalukatho people. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I'm remembering this correctly, but when he got that weapon and talked to that person, did that Goliath tell him that it was the Kalukatho's way to have their soul forged into a weapon? Mm. That's how I remember him saying it, and I'm just like this just re dawned on me, so I'm just trying to get my facts straight. So, I granted this is based off my memory, and that was a long time ago. Um, right. <laughs> so what I could, what I could be saying right now is wrong compared to what I said then, but what I say now is the truth, given the <laughs> the information at at our disposal. Right. That Goliath in particular was forged into a weapon because he was angry, because he wanted vengeance. I see. Um, where that isn't necessarily the Kalukatha way, that was what that Goliath in particular wanted because he wanted vengeance. I see. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, back... To it, I guess. Yeah. Um, so Suni will uh, kind of give a, a long breath uh, before speaking, and he'll say, I think that I will be the most biased person here um, with this answer, but I, after events of this morning in which I was trying to feel Kiyofi's spirit, I I saw her in a way, I, I don't really know how to explain it, but she was falling apart and she looked sick and suffering and I made the most brief connection with her before it was all pulled away. But I know that her soul is not at rest. And I know that she was not given back to the mother of the mountains like she deserved and like she earned. And so I'm inclined to agree with Cecily. Did Carousel already tell Ajax? what she's going to pick or no? It's not. No. So then Ajax will say, Carousel. Guys, I'm also in some kind of accord with the others. I think it's safe to say that both their deaths were unnatural. to say that either of them are at peace in their afterlife as of yet but Kyothi was also she was she was leading the Goliaths at least part of them she was the one to get them to open to the world I believe I believe they need her to be with them. Especially... She again just stops. I think... I think Kyothi would be the one that would want to keep 
on fighting. Not to say Natalia wouldn't, but she's done her job. She's lived that life, suffered the consequences of it, and continued on. It's not restful, it's not deserved, it's not any of that. But it's different. I think that at least is certain. Then I guess it's settled. You haven't said your piece. I know that Natalia was a friend of yours before. You are. And that still matters. I knew Kiyothi very little. What I did know of her, and when I fought beside her, she was a great person. A great fighter. I knew Natalia much longer. I am, he looks to Asuni, extremely biased as well in this conversation. But it is a group decision. Next teams. Like you, if you A group decision can only be made with all information presented, though. Please, if there is anything more you want to say, the decision is not made yet. I don't know what to say. This is a very hard decision. I won't lie if I was to say that I don't feel partially responsible for Natalia's death. I feel the same way, which is where I also feel conflicted in that area. I was right next to her and it was messy and <laughs> horrible. So I'm right there with you. My vote is Natalia. But I understand bringing Kiyoti back over and if what you saw proved soon I fear that we might not have much to bring Kiyoti back if we don't act and although Talia was killed by those creatures. She wasn't killed by Issa. Kiyothi was. And I think if we don't use this time to bring her back now, we might not ever be able to, even with the greater means there are. I'm gonna say something that no one's gonna like, just heads up, but I feel like someone should say it before we make a final call. Whoever we bring back, there's no guarantee that they won't just die a second time. And this is true. And I think that's part of the decision. However that affects it. I mean, I have taken so much more care 
in every fight we've been in since I've come back, and look at how many times we still bite the bullet. I think, personally, I, I don't know, none of us really know, but I think if we brought back Tio, it would maybe bring her some kind of peace to have the chance to give her life fighting the Dark One, if it happened, if it came to that. But Natalia, I... I don't know what it's like to be a mom, but I've had a few, and... I think she would just be worried about abandoning her family again. I know that fucking sucks, but I don't know. Whichever we choose, it's not a great situation. <laughs> but we can be A little joyous knowing we have at least one choice rather than none. Like I said, you know my vote, but I understand bringing Kyothi back. And I will have no malice if that is the decision we make. Uh, Ajax is going to grab a plate of breakfast and look at the party and say, I I'm going to bring this to Bianca. He's going to get up and kind of bow a little bit and walk away with the food towards Bianca's door. Okay. If nobody else has anything left to say at the table. Um, Cecily, I think, just kind of noticing the, the natural silent end that's kind of starting to happen, she'll also get up and... She, uh... Her, her hands are still trembling a little bit. They probably have been for over 24 hours at this rate. Um, but she just... I'm gonna get fresh air. Or, um... Whatever you call it here. And she'll go ahead and step outside and... Into some... Place... <laughs> out in the out in the city and she'll find a private enough area mm -hmm. um, and she's like doing everything in her power not to just not like break shit and kind of lose control of everything this is probably the longest period of her life that she's held composure <laughs> Mm -hmm. despite having just dozens of massive emotions mm -hmm. inside of her. So she's probably just going to find a quiet, secluded spot and clench really hard, trying not to have an outburst and then eventually just collapse into a mournful cry. Yeah. Okay. So, as uh, Cecily is um, doing that, um, Carousel Asuni, did you guys have anything? Or were you just going to kind of 
quietly sit and finish your breakfast. Suni would say one more. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go on. Ah. Okay. Uh, Suni would just kind of after like a long pause, I assume kind of an awkward silence after um, Ajax and Cecily both left. Uh, he'll kind of poking around at his breakfast. He'll look at Carasilla and say, is choosing not to bring somebody back the same as killing them? No. No, it's... It's not, it's... Certainly not. I... You're not thinking about it in those terms, are you? It's hard not to. We have two, two close to loved ones that are dead. We have a choice to bring back one. It's not keeping the other one dead. It's offering one of them a hand. We know that they're worth something, as all people are. If we know there's value to their life, then how can we deny them that? I don't want to choose. We should never have to choose, but we have to. Yeah. It's going to be a really hard day. Agreed. Chris is not going to go anywhere. She's just going to sit, basically, like, more statuesque. Just kind of looking down at, like, probably half-finished plate. Yeah, soon he does the same. He kind of pokes around his food and then contemplates eating it, but doesn't actually ever get around to finishing anything. As that conversation comes to a close, um, Bianca, you hear a knock at your door. Yeah, she'll answer it. Um, I brought you breakfast. Thanks. It looks good. It's actually quite delicious. Cecily thinks it's cave roaches. I mean, that's probably what it is. But it looks good. It's very good. She'll, like, bring it into her room and, like, set it down. She hasn't started eating it, though. Can Ajax just make a quick insight check? Just Bianca's demeanor? Just everything that's going on? Sure. I mean, I can tell you... It. Yeah, she's not really, like, uh... I, I mean, you know Bianca pretty well, so honest, I could probably be a little bit more. Bianca's just not very emotive as a person, but you have you can see her tells. Um, honestly, her being more quiet, not eating, etc., uh, just like being even more reserved than natural is a sign of just like she's been very contemplative and like deep in thought and sad. Um, and she knows that you guys probably made a choice at this point. Um, and like, you you know she knows what it is kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Ajax is just going to kind of open the door a little bit and say, can I come in or would you like me to leave? You can come in. He goes in, closes the door, and... I'm sorry. 
Ay. I know we're at that point that we thought we wouldn't have to get to. Or maybe we thought that it wouldn't come this fast. I'm sorry that the decision has to be made. And it's horrible. And you can see she's like thinking about like beginning to say words, but then she just begins to like cry. But she'll like nod. Ajax will walk over and just kind of hold his hands out. Yeah, she'll like a little girl bury herself. No one should have to go through this. And nothing I can say will comfort you. I know that. And you after... Kinda... Oh, God. oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh... After, uh, just a moment, uh, she will look up to him and say, I'm so sorry if this is how you felt after she died back in Belka. I'm so sorry I wasn't there to be there for you. There's no reason to be sorry about that. Everyone goes separate ways, has their own life. I would never have you feel that way if you weren't there. I wanted to be, though. I know. This... No, I have no idea what you're feeling. But I can only imagine it's worse than what I did. I lost someone close to me that I love, but this is different. I want you to know that my love is Natalia. I would Thank you, but I wouldn't, I mean, that makes sense, but I wouldn't judge or be upset if it was the other one, like, I assume everyone else voted, like, Everyone's I understand the situation. Time. Know that everyone is, is having a very hard time with this. I just wish we had more time. I wish I had access to the great magics of the world so I could bring them both back. What are you thinking? And I know people have asked you this, but... If you want to. So many things. Some of them, I think, and I start to pick apart in my head all at once. It's like no emotion feels worthy to express or even say because I 
I don't know. It just makes it's. I know, and I know what you're gonna say. I know what everyone's gonna say. It's big to me, but it like feels so small right now, and. It's just trying to balance this with Kyothi and then having to see her and look at Suni and everyone else and then turn around and try and rebuild a kingdom and then the Dark One and what's most important. I don't know anymore. I can't figure he's, it out. He's gonna, like get down on one knee so that I guess he's level at this point <laughs> <laughs> um, and look at you and say you're important you say this is not a big thing for everyone else that it's small it doesn't matter you are important what you feel is important Don't belittle your feelings for everyone else. It's those feelings that drive us to do great things. It's those things that make us who we are. No matter what happens, No matter what decision is made, whatever feelings come from that, don't diminish them. I wish I could put them in a box and put them on a shelf. Why? So I can go back to them later. <laughs> I don't want to think about it now. There's so much to think about. I know. It really, really sucks. I do I... feel better that a decision is made. It feels like a weight lifted off. I overheard that. Well, have you thought about if Kiyoti is brought back? What do with her soul? I think what the dwarves practice is beautiful. And I think my mom. I think my mom would want to be there with me. She would. No matter what, she's always there. It also makes me feel a little bit uh, better knowing where her soul is at. As a human, I don't really know where she is right now. But the Dark One having a lot of domain over souls lately. I feel comfortable knowing exactly where she's resting and who's in control. I'm going to do that. Um, 
I don't know if you've ever been part of these rituals, these resurrection rituals, but three people are supposed to make a, like, be a part of it. Um, and I don't think, even though I love Kyothi, I don't think my emotional state is the best one for success of the, Ooh. of the spell. It's and okay I, to sit it out. Between Kyothi and your mother, I'm sure they'll understand. I was just gonna ask if you'd stay with me. Of course. I was going to say that the three are already out there. <laughs> Thank you. Just know, everyone is here for you, and no matter how hard this is, we will always be there for you. And if you go ahead with what the dwarves can do. Like you said, you'll know she's always there. It's for the best. And I know that. You don't have to tell yourself that. If I keep saying it, It'll, it'll become true. He's gonna stand back up and just hug her again. Yeah. You wanna know something weird? Sure. When I was crafting the spear I heard Leos' voice Leos? Yeah, like Paylor's lion Leos At least he called himself that Well, I guess your the remnants of your sword did have a divine energy I guess that would bring that there Glad it wasn't Nissen That would have been wonky Weird. What I'm trying to say. Well, Ajax kind of pauses. Wait. That's right. You've talked to the Raven Queen. I was going to say that these are real and gods do exist, but you've already <laughs> talked to one. <laughs> but I'm glad you've had that experience. I, I mean, you know me. Before the Raven Queen stuff, I was pretty meh about dealing with gods since I already had to deal with demon shit. And I just was like, I don't want to mess with it. I don't. I mean, I've been that way too. Yeah, and I guess having someone, having an entity greater than you to just let them take some of the weight and responsibility off. I get it now why people devote their lives and make oaths to these beings. It's nice leaning on something, even if it's just an idea. Just having something out there to hold you up when you're not feeling good. Natalia didn't worship any of them, did she? No. Well, if you need to talk, I'm around. 
hell if you just want to swing your weapon around and train. I'm also around. No problem. <laughs> I could use both lately, so thank you. I am noticing that some of you could use a little training. <laughs> I agree. In weapons, I I can't do the magic stuff. I'm limited on that too, so hmm. you can help me out with one of those, though. All right. Well, I'm going to leave you alone. Um, I... I'll go with you to talk to everybody. Are you I don't sure? need to hide. A... I don't need to hide away in my room. Okay. I mean, I'll come back probably because that's who I am. But no, um, if you come right. out of your room, you're not allowed back. <laughs> I don't want them thinking I'm upset with them. That's the last thing. So, I'll let them know that I'm not. Are you? I'm not. Inside check. Uh, she's not hiding it, but if you want to roll, he's not upset with them or anybody. Okay. Well, if you're coming with me, he's going to pick up the food and hand it to her. You need to eat some of that on the way there. Okay. Fine. And she'll start to nibble on the roach. All right. And I guess we're going to walk back to the group. Okay. All right. As the two of you leave the room and prepare to speak with the rest of the group on the decision that was made and the next steps, that's actually where we're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, <laughs> so with that, we're going to go to break and we'll be back in a little bit. Meow, 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 meow.